Good day, viewers. You are welcome again to Midday Prayer, coming to you live on the Advent Cable Network Nigeria, ACNN TV. It's always a great time at midday where we gather to share fellowship, to commune with God, to hear from God, and to relate with Him. As we fellowship this afternoon, I trust God to speak to your heart, minister to you, and give you a word for this season. Let us pray together. Lord, we ask that you lighten our path today. Speak to us, minister to our hearts, and be glorified and adored. For in Jesus' holy name, we have prayed. Amen. Today, we are going to be considering the blessing of God is transgenerational. The blessing of God is transgenerational. Now, what does that mean? The blessing of God moves from a generation of a blessed man to another generation of a blessed man. The blessing of God is not selfish. It does not stop at one generation. When the Lord blesses a man, it transcends down to generations, even yet unborn. And that is why tomorrow, till tomorrow in church, we still sing Abraham's blessings and mine. The blessings of Abraham still run even in our own generation. Now, let's get to the Bible. Psalm 112, verses 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his command. His descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. So the generation of the upright will be blessed. So the blessing of God moves from one generation into another. The generation of God is not just for the man that the Lord pronounces blessed. If the Lord pronounces a man blessed, everybody around that man, associated, connected, related to that man, is equally blessed by virtue of what that man carries. Just like being around a rich man. If your father is rich, forget it. Anyhow, one way or the other, it, it, rubs over, it, it rubs off on you. And so is the blessing. When a man is blessed, his generation, his children, his descendants will also partake of that blessing. He said the generation of the righteous is blessed. So God is telling you, you are blessed. And the blessing I have given you is not just for you alone. The blessing is also for your generation. That is why he told Abraham, I will bless you and you shall be a blessing. Whoever you bless is blessed and whoever you cost is cost. So the blessing of God moves from one generation. Now, a lion does not beget a dog. It is an error. A lion can never beget a dog. An eagle cannot, be, cannot do, uh, give birth to anything less than an eagle. It cannot give birth to a parrot. And so a blessed man cannot give birth to a person that is not blessed. It moves from one generation to another. So the blessing of God is transgenerational. You are blessed, your children are blessed, your children's children are blessed. People related to your children are blessed because they have contacted and connected a man that is blessed. I show you an example of a man that was blessed in the Bible. The book of 2 Samuel chapter 7 verse 11 to 16. That is the story of, um, of the man Daniel, of the man David. David was so blessed. That the Lord had to enter a covenant with him that his children too are blessed. That is 1 Samuel chapter 7. We read from verse 11. Yes, yeah, 2 Samuel chapter 7. He says, Since that time I have commanded judges to be over my people Israel and have caused you to rest from all your enemies. And the Lord tells you that he will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled, now this is God talking to David. When your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you who will come from your body and I will establish his kingdom. Now, David's father, Jesse, was not a king. But because the man David had been blessed of the Lord, the Lord had to initiate something that had never happened in that history. In their lineage. He said, when you live and when you join your fathers in the grave, I will set up your seed to take over the kingdom. He said, he shall build a house for me and my name, and I will establish his, the throne of his kingdom forever. So that, what that means now is that until the entire generation of David, there shall never depart a king. 
Jezebel the part a king. Kingship was now in throne because the man David was blessed. So one person after the other, one person after the other. He said, I will be his father and he shall be my son. What more do we ask of God? When God blesses a man, God adopts the children of that man to be his. And whatever the man, covenant the man, the Lord entered with that man, the Lord does also for his children. So God is telling us this year that his blessing is transgenerational and he's telling us this day that we should connect into this blessing so that it will rub off on all our children and even our children's children. And see the exciting part, he said, if he commits iniquity, verse 14, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the blows of the sons of men. But my mercy, verse 15, but my mercy shall not depart from him as I took you from Saul, whom I removed from before you. Saul failed and it was removed from him. But he's saying, because of this blessing upon you, David, even if your son misbehaves, my blessing will not leave him. I will still show him mercy. That is what the blessing does. The blessing shows mercy. The blessing comes with mercy to ensure that the blessing still continues and is not truncated. The blessing of God. The blessing of God secures the future of the children of a blessed man. The blessing of God secures the future of the children. It secures the future of the children of that man. The blessing of God keeps the eye of God on the children of such a man that is blessed. Why don't you cry to God for the blessing today? Why don't you ask God for the blessing today so that the future of your children can be preserved and be secured? Let me read it from Message Bible. He said, finally, I am going to give you peace from your enemies. Furthermore, God said, God himself will be the, okay, let me, he said, I will be a father and he will be a son to me. When he does wrong, I will discipline him in the usual ways, the pitfalls and the obstacles of his mother life. But I will never remove my gracious love from him as I removed from Saul, who preceded you and whom I most certainly did remove. Your family and your kingdom are permanently secured. That is what happens when you are blessed. Everything about your family and your kingdom is secured. Everything about your family is secured, is sealed. Because you are blessed. So why don't you connect with the blessing of God today? So that the future of your family and your children will be secured. He said, I am keeping my eye on them. And your royal throne will always be there. Rock solid. Nothing will happen to your throne. That which you have, nothing will happen to it. Where you stand, nothing will happen to it. Your possession, nothing will happen to it. Because you are blessed. So don't even worry what will happen when you go. A blessed man does not worry about the future because he knows that the future has already been taken care of by the man that has blessed him. A blessed man is not worried about his things that will happen when he is no more because the future and the things that are to happen have been taken care of, have been secured by the person who has blessed him. And that is why in all they get in, Run for the blessing of God. Grab it. Make sure you get it. That was what Jacob saw. And he said, I will never let you go unless you bless me. I will never let you go. A blessed man does not give birth to an entity. No. Never. Because there is something the man carries that is too heavy to accommodate an entity. There is something the man carries that is too heavy to accommodate mediocrity. There is something the man carries that is too heavy to settle for anything. That is why a blessed man can never produce a non-entity. And if you must grab anything in this life, please let it be the blessings of God. Securing the future of your children is not by taking them to Canada. No. They can go to Canada and struggle. Securing the future of your children is not only by taking them to UK to go and study. No, they can study and still come back and become hoodlums. Securing the future of your children is not by taking them to the best private schools. They can go there and get into drug addiction and their life will end up destroyed. The only way to secure the future of your children is by being blessed. They are connected to a, to a root that is of a blessed, is, is a blessed seed. And as long as they remain in that root, they can never struggle. They can never be non-entities. They can never be drug addicts. 
They cannot be hoodlums. So take them to the best universities in the world. And if the devil wants to use them, the devil will still use them. But a blessed man, a blessed man can never be associated with such things. Because there is something too high. There is something too connected. There is something too heavy. There is something too strong to have enough room for such. That was why Jeremiah, the Bible says, he said, right from your mother's womb, I knew you. A prophet to the nation. Now, there is something a blessed man has conceived and carried, and the, the wife is carrying this baby. So the future of this baby is already secured because there is a blessing in it. There is a blessing in it. A man once sent the child abroad, and the child studied and came back one day and said, I'm not schooling again. Third day, said, I'm not schooling again. And this child was sent out from secondary school abroad. But I tell you something. They said they did the physical, but the spiritual was not done. When you do the physical, you can only go be with it to the limit of your capability. But once the spiritual is not backed up with it, forget it is a failure. It said the Lord watch a city in vain do the watchmen watch. It said the Lord build a city in vain do the builders build. So forget it. You are making a big mistake. You cannot succeed. If you think you can succeed on the strength of your finances alone, no. You can only succeed and succeed eternally on the strength of the blessing of God. Mm. We tend to plan so much about physical and wrap everything about money. Money is good, but the blessing is better. Take your money, give me the blessing. And I tell you something. He said the earth is his and the fullness thereof. <laughs> money is part of the fullness but the blessing is just the best when he all those other come all those other things will follow all those other things will come I'm going to pray this day I'm going to say father please here am I I run to you perhaps you are among those that feel by securing the future of that child is by taking that child abroad alone can you ask God, say, Father, today I come to you in mercy. Ask God for mercy because we have failed, failed, failed in the first plan. We have failed in the first arrangement. Say, Father, I ask for your mercy. You have done the physical but neglected the spiritual. But I tell you something, the, what happens in the physical is a byproduct of what has happened in the spiritual. So if you fail to do the spiritual, the enemy will help you plan it and execute it. And you will see it manifest. I wonder where is it coming from? It's why men slept? Why men slept? Why you were sleeping and planning the physical? The enemy came and so tears. Because he refused to do the right thing. Can you say, Father, have mercy? I have missed it. I have missed it. Lord, have mercy. Lord, show me mercy. I have missed it. I have missed it. Lord, I ask for your mercy. I have missed it. I have taken, I've gone about, about, about this thing the wrong way. I have pursued it the wrong way. Lord. I, I was thinking I was securing the future of these children. I didn't know I was making error. Lord, I was making a big mistake. I was committing heavy blunders. Lord, have mercy. Can you pray? Say, Lord, have mercy. I have done the physical but failed to recognize that there is something that is bigger than that. And that is connected with the blessing. And the blessing comes from you. Mm. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. And that is the blessing. Say, Lord, I ask for your mercy. I ask for your mercy. I ask for your mercy. Hey, prato peheke sinte kasha ingro bada sante lekesha perito shata le prokoto se karapaya kata rapa inta paskanda yaba. Make a perito se pekita intelepreto pesha takata. Hey, elepreto kanle paratasha. Hey, bruko se petakasha intelebrada garaba. You're going to pray and say, Father, your blessing upon my life will rub off for my children and children's children. Uh, it will not end with me alone because your blessing is transgenerational. It happened in the life of David. It shall also happen in my time, in my life, in the life of my children, in the life of my children's children, down to the 10th and to the 5th, to the 20th generation of Jesus Taris. Can you open your mouth and say, I pray, I say, Lord, your blessing upon my life will not end with me. Ah, it will not be like that of King Saul, that the blessing upon the Lord ended with him. Ah, it shall not be my portion. Your blessing in my life shall be transgenerational. It 
shall move from one generation to another. Your blessing upon my life shall rub off on anybody associated, related, and connected to me. You're going to pray and say, Father, by your blessing of the, by virtue of your blessing, the future of my children is secured. Ah, by virtue of your blessing, the future of my children, my children, children is secured. Ah, leko pehantaska, iko pahandre eta, e paratos capra, e lata enta hoska. Maske telege, in bahaske perata, in copre intelash, in da apelete, in cropeteske, in leparanta, in lebrotosha, in meketasha, in lata pra in da. In da second Samuel 7, verse 11, it says, Ah, in the Lord speaking to David, message Bible, he said, I will keep my eye on them. You're going to say, Father, you will keep your eye on my seed. Ah, you will keep your eye on my seed. Ah, by virtue of your blessing, your eye will be on my seed. Uh, by virtue of your blessing, your eye will never cease from being on my seed. Ah, Mark, oh, pray, 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 pray. That prayer is very key. If the Lord I be on your seat, then it is settled. Your future, your generation is settled. Ah, Father, your eye will remain on my seat. Ah, never will it come to a time when, oh God, your eye will go off from my seat. In the name of Jesus. Somewhere again in verse 14 of that second song, he said, I will be a father to him. You're going to say, Father, come and be a father to me and my generation. And this, uh, my seed, Lord, come and be a father to us. Ah, leko pre ishepe, reparatanga, reparatekesha, imbra inkatoska, e beseta, e paratos, inketeta, e bra interada, improkotosha. A lesser peta, a pra enta yaba, o pecasa, a rapata, a ropetasca, a rebelata, a petasaka. You're gonna pray again, he said, ah, we. Mm. Mm, but I will never remove my gracious eye, love from him. I'm going to say, Father, by virtue of your blessing, your gracious love will not depart in my life and that of my family and that of my generation yet unborn. Uh, is a covenant you are entering with God by virtue of his blessing upon your life. Your, your, your gracious love will not go far from us. Leko shepreta, leko preinda, ya preteska, la perete. Lord, you will not remove your gracious love from us. Le pretenda casa, o peretas, embra tenka, eropeta, e pacasete, embra andalas, embarotesca, enga barada. Let's go. Now, see, David was worried about the future of his children. He was worried about the future of his children. And God speaking to him here, God was assuring him, relax, I will perfect all that concerns you. You are going to say, Father, I secure the true future of my children in your hands. Sir. Perform, perfect all that concerns them. Perfect all that concerns them. Ah, Masha Kataraba. Take care of my worries. Uh, and perfect all that concerns them. Uh, oh, your mother and pray. Mm. 
Mas katanya, los ku prajakasa. His eyes on the sparrows, and I know he watches me. I say because I'm happy. I say because I'm free. His eyes is on the sparrows, and I know He watches me. The Father, finally, Lord, watch over us. Lord, watch over us. Ah, make operatekesha. Watch over my children. Watch over my grandchildren. My great grandchildren. Wherever they will be. Ah, one thing about Job was that Job was a man that prayed for his children and his children's children. He never a day prayed without prayer, and that was why his blessing rubbed off on all of them. And I say, Father, keep your eye on them. Watch over them. Ah, the ones yet unborn. The ones born. Lord, watch over them. Hey, Kepetasia, and Petaska, ye paratasheta, eh, pato pereta seke pato pariata, and la pata co sheta, ye say la peta, in the pataska, a protoka sheta, ye pataka shapajaba, he bakara patandeska, mm, masha carabara, la drabaya garaba. Risco peretes, lashka daro. I say, Father, tonight, today, I connect with the blessing of the covenant of your blessing. I enter the covenant of your blessing. I enter the covenant of your blessing. I enter the covenant of your transgenerational blessing. I enter the covenant of your transgenerational blessing. Hey, biba kashata. Hey, paratandas. Begin to appreciate God for us our prayers. Begin to appreciate God for us our prayers. Let a man turn a heart ash. Ah. Hey, be thou exalted, O Lord, above all heavens. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above the heavens. Oh, let thy glory be above all the earth. Let thy glory be above all the earth. Can you say, Father, we are grateful. Lord, we worship you. We adore your name. Father, thank you because we have just entered a covenant of transgenerational blessing. Thank you because our seed is blessed. Our generation is blessed. And our generation shall praise your name. Our generation shall worship you. Our generation shall live for you. Our generation shall serve you. Because we are blessed. And because they are blessed. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. Because we know we have just entered a realm of transgenerational blessing. Be thou glorified, Lord. Be thou exalted. For in Jesus' holy name, we have prayed. Amen. Viewers, thank you for being a part of today's midday prayer. I believe you have been blessed. I believe you have been encouraged. And I know that somebody's step has just been redirected. The Lord has redirected somebody's step into the right direction. That the important thing to do is to contact and connect with the blessing. And as you do that, may God bless you. Thank you so much. See you again. Same time, same station. God bless you. Remain rapturable. Ash Wednesday, collect. Almighty and merciful God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you, the God of all mercy, perfect forgiveness and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Collet for the week, Lent 2, Sentence A great prophet has risen among us. God has visited his people. Luke chapter 7, verse 16. Collet Eternal God, whose glory it is always to have mercy. Be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word through Jesus Christ your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns 
one God forever and ever. Amen.